Hello and welcome to this new tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to uh, perform or execute select st statements on our SQL Server databases. I have here my uh, SQL Server Man Management Studio open. I'm going to connect to my SQL Server instance, MS SQL 2019, using Windows Authentication. Here on my uh, instance, I have two databases that we have created previously, MyDB and SampleDB, but both of these uh, databases do not, do not contain any uh, data uh, in them. So we are going to use a sample uh, database of SQL Server called AdventureWorks to, to learn how to perform SQL, uh, SQL uh, select queries. So let's do that. So I'm going to restore the uh, AdventureWorks uh, backup file on this sample DB uh, database. So right click on the sample DB tasks and then restore and click uh, or choose restore database. When this window uh, of restore database opens, it's going to ask you for the source of res restore operation. We are going to restore from a file. So let's choose device and then click here. And then the backup media is of type file, not URL. So click here on add to add the file. The file that I'm going to be using is in the C partition under my share. Uh, no, sorry, it's under uh, INET pub. So let's go to INET pub. Then my FTP folder. And this is where I have the backups for the AdventureWorks uh, database. If you want uh, to use these uh, backups, you can download them for free from the uh, Microsoft's website. So let's select the AdventureWorks 2014.back file and then click OK to add it, then click OK to select the uh, backup device. The destination of, of our restore operation is going to, dig, uh, to be the sample uh, DB uh, database that we have created in a previous video. And as you can see here, the type of restore is a full restore. You can click here on verify backup media to verify the uh, backup uh, file let's do that and as you can see here the backup media has been uh, verified successfully if you click here on files you can view uh, the files that are going to be uh, created from this uh, restore operation and where they are going to be uh, put And here under options, you have more uh, restore options, but we are not going to change any of that. Let's just click OK to start the restore operation. As you can see, the restore operation did not work because uh, the, the, the name of the database uh, we are trying to restore is different from the database that we have selected. So let's change the name of the database. Let's create a new one for this uh, restore operation. Let's try that. And as you can see, the restore operation is working. And it has completed successfully. Click OK. Now let's expand the AdventureWorks uh, database. And if you expand tables, you can see the different uh, tables that this database contains. And, and you can see it's a bunch of tables. Database tables are uh, basically objects that store all the data in a database. In a table, data is logically organized in a row and column format, which is similar to a spreadsheet. If we choose any of these uh, tables, uh, for example, uh, this one, the department table. 
and do select top uh, thousand rows. This is what we are talking about. A table is a uh, a group of rows or a number of rows. Here we have sixteen rows, and each row is composed of many uh, uh, columns. For example, the first row has the column uh, department ID with a value of 1, the column name with a value of engineering, the column uh, group name with the value of research and development, and the column date, uh, modified date with this value, uh, uh, April 30th, 20, 2008. So this is what we mean by rows and columns of a table. And each row represents a unique record in a table and each field represents a column in the record. Another example is the uh, person table. So if we select rows from this uh, table, this one is bigger than the uh, department table because it has uh, more rows and more columns, as you can see. When you, where you see uh, null in a field or in a column, it means that there is no value. Null means no value. On this table, we see uh, columns such as first name, middle name, last name, etc. SQL Server uses uh, schemas to logically uh, group tables and other uh, database objects. And in fact, this person dot person the first person is the schema and the second person is the table so in general the name of a table is schema name dot table name for example human resources dot shift means the shift table in the human resources schema human resources dot department means the department table in the uh, human resources schema so it's a logical way to group uh, tables in this database we have uh, mo multiple schemas we have the dbo schema we have the human resources schema person production purchasing and sales so these are the schemas used by or some of the schemas used by this database in order to query data from a table you use the select statement and if you have noticed when i when i click it on select top thousand rows you see here a statement that starts with select and this is the statement that is used to query data from a database table so let's try it by ourselves. Let's let me click on uh, the Adventure Works database, select a new query, and try to create a select statement uh, myself. So let's do select name, comma, group name from the department uh, table, this one. So, human resources dot department, and you have here auto completion uh, functionality. So let's try to run this query. Let me select it and click on execute. And here you see that I have uh, performed a select statement in which. I selected the name and the group name fields from the human resources dot department table. The department table has more uh, fields or columns, but I have chosen to only show these uh, columns. If I remove, for example, the name uh, column, I, I will only get the group name column. Let's try to run this. And as you can see, I only get the group name column. So in order to perform a uh, select statement on a table, so after select, you put a list of uh, 
column uh, names that are separate, separated by uh, commas and then you add the from keyword and after it the name of the table you want to perform a select query on let's perform another select statement on the uh, sales.customer uh, table let's expand this table and expand the column the columns uh, area and then let's try to write a select statement so let's select the uh, customer ID comma for example let's choose person ID and then comma territory ID from sales dot person or oh, sorry sales dot customer let's select this statement and run it and as you can see I get the result as expected if you want to retrieve all the columns of the table instead of putting the uh, list of fields you can just put a star and you will get all the fields or the columns of a table as you can see here with the department table we can do the same with the uh, customer table so we put a star instead of all of these uh, columns and execute the query and these are all the columns of the customer table you can if you want add a condition to the select statement for example if we want here to show uh, the customer that have the uh, territory ID equals to 4 for example we can do that we can say where in the end of the select statement where terry territory ID equals 4 let's run the query again and as you can see I got only uh, the customers that have territory ID equals to 4 if I change 4 to 9 I will get only the customers that have territory ID equals to 9 so you get the idea you can also uh, order the result of the select statement if you want for example we can do order by which is going to order the result of the select statement order by person ID let's run the query again And as you can see, it started with a null uh, value. And then it started uh, ordering uh, the customers by the person ID. So from the smallest to the uh, biggest value of customer ID. We can sort, sort it in descending order by ID, adding the uh, this keyword in the end so let's run it again so this time the customers will be ordered in descending order of the person ID value so the first row is the customer with the biggest person ID value and so on and so forth let's say I want to change this query and I want to see only the customers whose uh, store ID value is not new so let's remove this condition and put store ID not new so in order to do that we do where store ID is not new 
so let's run this query and see the result and voila we have all the customers but only those whose store id is not nil if you want to do the same uh, for the person id meaning that we want to view all the customers whose store id is not nil and also person id is not nil we can do that we can add here and person id is not nil so let's run this and voila we have all the customers whose person id is not nil and store id is not nil so both of these values are not nil and we have 635 uh, rows another thing we can do is here instead of ordering uh, the result of the select statement by person id we can do group by store id which means that the result uh, set is going to group it by customers who have the same group uh, or store id so let's try that and see the result here it's saying that customer id is invalid in the select list because it is not contained in either an aggregate function or the group by clause so let's fix this, this by doing uh, here count star which is an aggregate function and then uh, add also the store id and now if we run the query you can see that it is working what you have to bear in mind is that uh, the select statement processes the clauses in the following sequence it processes the from clause then the where clause then the group by clause then the select clause and then the order by clause so this is uh, the order of processing the clauses so in this tutorial you have learned how to use the sql server select statement to query data from a single table. I hope this video has been helpful for you and thank you for watching.